go with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 Luke chapter 2 verse 4 Luke chapter 2 starting with verse 4 we're gonna read just three verses but we're gonna be in the whole the whole vibe Luke chapter 2 starting with verse 4 and because Joseph was a descendant of King David he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea David's ancient home he traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee he took with him Mary, his fiance. New Living Translation says fiance. The reality is they were espoused, or who was, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. Watch this. Can we go to verse 7? She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in snugly, wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for him. My assignment today is to minister to you from this subject, no was necessary. If you're sitting next to somebody, can you just say no was necessary? No no was necessary. Father, I pray for anointing that will enable me to make the word speak clearly. I claim authority to share the gospel this day. I believe that you will use lips of clay to speak revelation and rhema to all those connected. May the word of God do that which it is sent to do for you. Remind us in your word that it will not return void. So I claim the authority to share the gospel this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine, can you imagine, can you imagine in Bible days being pregnant, being unmarried, the man that you're espoused to is given word that he's got to travel from a village in Nazareth to Bethlehem. There are no Ubers. <laughs> there is no vehicle with numbers on the trunk. There is no subway, no train, no plane. In fact, you've got donkeys and camels. And when you finally get there, you go in to the Holiday Inn, the Marriott, the Hilton, the Main, <laughs> and you discover that your reservation has been canceled and there's no room in the inn. Can I stop there parenthetically and just preach to y'all for a moment and remind you that there is no story in the Bible that is more manipulated than the Christmas story. We've all made Jesus so broke, busted, and disgusted, but I want to remind you, Sister Cassandra, West Virginia in the house, the reality is, if they were so broke, why did they go to the hotel or the inn to get a room? At least they had enough on their credit card to be able to secure a room for one night. Am I making sense so far? Yet when they get there, the innkeeper, I always wanted to do an interview with the innkeeper. I would love to talk to that brother after he finds out that the couple that he didn't let get a room were the savior of the world. That's a whole parenthetical perspective right there that you better be careful how you turn folk away from your life because you can't identify who they are because they don't look like who you would want them to look like. My grandmother used to say, we'll be entertaining angels unaware. You better watch how you take for granted relationships and people that come into your life very sporadically, how that might be the hand of God bringing somebody in your life that's so connected to your destiny. Watch this. Sometimes the people we're trying to spend all this face time with can't help us, and sometimes the folks that we're turning away are the ones that God has ordained to move us to our next destination. It's so amazing. That brother tells Mary and Joseph they can't 
find space in the inn. Now, I'm, I'm, you know, I got to play it out. Even if they didn't have a room, man, can they sleep on the couch down in the lobby? Can they just, can they just make a pallet by the fireplace? But he actually turns them away. And the thing that's so amazing to me is I believe the whole story is about our ability to handle no. There it is. Watch this. I've learned that until we can master handling no, and many times, in fact, yesterday, um, I'm going to get there in a minute, but yesterday I spent a long time talking to my sister, and I was telling her, watch this, shout cue on the way, I'm going to preach myself happy. At least five times, I tried to leave the mount. Years ago, when the mount was small, I tried to leave at least five times. At least five times, I sent my resume to another church, and every time, i never forget, one that was the most funny, um, Deaconess Antoinette, the one that was most funny, I preached at this local church in Tidewater, and when I got up to preach, all of my little church from Chesapeake was sitting out there because somebody had told them that I was coming to candidate for their church. And so here it is, I never forget, Sister Matron Beckett and, and Mother, Mother Laura Eason and all of them sitting out there in the front three rows of the church that's not our church. And I'm over there trying to candidate and somebody has told them I'm coming over there trying to leave Mount Lebanon and they sitting there. I preached myself to death that day. And anybody that knows Sister Matron Be Beckett, you know she would just she would just say what she going to say. And so when church was over, she came up to me and uh, Mother Easton said, I never forget, Mother Easton was a mother, you know, she was so motherly. Mother Easton said, Pastor, why are you over here? What are you doing? But Matron Beckett, Sister Matron Beckett, she was a former pastor's wife. She came up to me and said, bring your tail on back over here to Bell's Mill. You know you ain't got no business being over here. And I just felt this big because the reality is I was so busy trying to make a blessing. Oh, y'all missing a shout cue. I was so busy trying to make a blessing. Bishop Ivy Hillier says, if you make a blessing, you'll miss a blessing because the reality is we don't have to manufacture the blessings that God has ordained for us because whatever God has for us, it's for us. And so the reality is I came on back to Mount Lebanon with my 75 folk over here, cornfields and tractors rolling down Bells Mill Road. I'm here to tell you that 30 years later, I would be upset if there was somebody else standing up here that could look at an LED screen, if there was somebody else up here that could look at all these minstrels over here and I was still stuck somewhere that was never my assignment, I'm just grateful to learn that they said no to me and I learned how to handle the no. Somebody around the world ought to jump up and say, God, I can handle the no. Because what I've learned is that sometimes the denial is not a delay or the delay is not a denial. God is working it out. And I want to suggest to you that Mary and Joseph become the example for how we handle a no and recognize that the no is necessary. Here it is. Let me give it to you real quick. Number one, why is the no or why was the no necessary? Y'all ready? Sisters, don't y'all throw me under the bus. I know I got all my sisters up there on the Zoom today. Don't throw me under the bus, but I got to go here. Now you know if many of us had gone into that inn, pregnant as we are, wobbling in there, all stressed, been on this long journey all the way from Nazareth, and that fool behind the counter told us that we didn't have any space, we would have put our hand on our hip, started that finger to wagon, got up in his face and said, you watch this, this is where Elder, this is when Elder goes black woman on me. She says, you have lost your ever loving mind up in here. So you know the head would have been juking, the finger would have been pointing, and the hand would have been on the hill. But yet the Bible says, watch this, here it is. In verse 19, it says, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. That's the first point. I want you to understand that when no happens in your life, that the no is necessary and what it's doing is, here it is, is challenging us to learn how to control our flesh. I don't know who needs to hear this, but every now and then, you can't get everybody told. You can't get everybody straight. You can't always share your mind. You can't all, and watch this, stop saying, well, they know who I am. I am who I am and they know I'm going to tell them like it is and I'm going to keep it 100. Sometimes the reason why God is allowing a no to happen in our life is so that he can prove we 
we know how to hold our peace. We know how to understand that God is moving. We know how to keep our mouth closed and control our flesh. I'm here to tell you that if you learn how to control your flesh, you will go so much further because if the reality is that God is still in control, that God is still sovereign, that God is still moving on my behalf, I've got to learn how to control my flesh. That's why I love what 1 Corinthians 9 and 27 says. It says, I discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should otherwise I fear that after preaching to others I myself might be disqualified okay y'all ready there's a whole lot of folk right now that are not as far in their destiny as they could be because of one night where they couldn't control their flesh there's a whole lot of folk right now that could have had the job of their lifetime but because they couldn't control their flesh they went in and said something that might have been the right thing to their boss but it got them disqualified and I'm here to tell you that in this season we better learn how to control our flesh there's a whole lot of men that are paying a lot of child support because you couldn't control your flesh there's a whole lot of women that are still by yourself because you couldn't control your flesh there's a whole lot of young people that are too intelligent to be working the job you're working but you couldn't control your flesh that's why Galatians 5 17 says the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Can I suggest to you that the enemy many times allows things to happen in our life because what he's trying to do is get us to operate in our flesh and abort our destiny. But I believe I got some folks watching around the world today that'll declare, I'm not gonna let my mouth disqualify me. I'm not gonna let my flesh disqualify me. I'm gonna let the Lord fight my battles. I don't have to get everybody told. I don't have to respond to everything. I don't have to say something to everybody on Facebook because the reality is a no sometimes is my opportunity to show people I can control my flesh. I got to move. Not only do I need to learn how to control my flesh, but the no was necessary, here it is, to celebrate my favor. Okay, see if I can labor right there. I want to suggest to you that what Mary decides is why in the world am I going to allow some insensitive innkeeper to cause me to forget that in the midst of everything that's going on, I got a whole lot to celebrate. Oh God, I don't know who I'm talking to right there. Baby, you at the wrong church if you wanted to have a COVID pity party today. I'm sorry. You need to click off the Zoom right now find somebody else that will cry with you because I am not about to take an invitation to your personal pity party because I want to let you know I'm looking at people on the zoom your hair still looks good you still got hair even if it's not the right color you still got hair you got somewhere to sit on the couch you got a couch you got a roof over your head obviously I'm looking at these screens it doesn't look like too many of us have missed a meal in spite of all that's going on we We've had food on our table. We got a roof over our head. We got loved ones still around us. I need you to tell somebody, don't bring me no depressing news because with all that's going on, I still have the favor of God. You know what this no does? This no gives Mary the opportunity to say, look, am I going to let one moment over here cause me to get so distracted that I forget all the other stuff? Do you not know I am a woman that is pregnant and have never been with a man? That's got to be favor. I'm a woman that's getting ready to bring forth the savior of the world. That's got to be favor. I got a man that believed my story that I have never been with a man. And instead of putting me away quietly, he still wants to be with me. I've got a man that loves me in spite of all my issues. Oh God, I need somebody that'll throw up a hand and say, God, forgive me for every time I got so distracted that I didn't give you thanks for the favor that's on my life I got food in the refrigerator I got clothes on my back I got a house that I'm still living in I might have to wear a mask but that's all right I'll wear my mask and lift my hands up I'll wear my mask and bring my tie 
I'll wear my mask. I need somebody that understands. I've got the favor of God. That's why I love what Luke 2.21 says. It says eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. Do I have anybody that will give God glory today? Because you know that in the midst of COVID, I'm still here. The other day I had my first encounter. And I'm telling you, you will praise God when you get that COVID result. And it says negative. And you know it's by the grace of God. It's only by the grace of God. It's not because you're better than anybody else. It's not because you're more anointed than anybody else. It's not because you didn't get some stuff wrong. It's because God's grace is sufficient. Somebody ought to be ready to give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords praise because you know I got favor on my life. My children are all right. My wife is all right. My husband is all right. I still got transportation. I still got a little money in the bank. I still got the ability to lift up my hands. I still have the opportunity to get up on my feet. I am too favored to be depressed. I am too favored to be discouraged. I am too favored to have an attitude. God, do what you got to do. So the no was necessary. Number one, to control my flesh. The no was necessary. Number two, to celebrate my favor. But then thirdly, the no was necessary. Y'all ready? To confine my fellowships. Can I tell y'all? Woo, God help me. Can I tell you that one of the greatest unexpected blessing of this season, can you come to church? No. Can we come sit in there? No. And I know how discouraging it is week after week to get that no. But can I tell you that one of the greatest things that has come out of the no is watch this. Now you know who your real friends are. And now you know who your fake friends were. Now you know who really cares about you. You know who has not called you since March. And you know who have called you that you never expected to call you. You know who you thought would be checking on you, who has not checked on you. And you know who you never thought would check on you and they call and say, I just want to let you know I love you. Can I tell you that every now and then, the reason why the no is necessary is so that God can control our fellowships and get us inside in an atmosphere. God, I help, help me to preach this. I love the fact that what God obviously knows is, Mary, I'm not going to let you go in the inn where you're going to hang out with folks that are smiling in your face but talking about you behind your back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you out here in a barn where there's some shepherds that you would never meet. Oh, I wish I had about five folk around the world that would jump up in your living room, your bedroom, or anywhere else you can and just say, God, bring the people that I need in my life and pull out the people that are not called to be with me. Pull out the people that would be faking in front of me. It's not time for fake friends it's time for real relationships now and that's why I love listen to what Luke chapter 2 verse 8 says it says that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep can I suggest to you that if they had gotten a room in the inn they would have never met the shepherds if they had gotten a room in the inn they would have maintained fellowship with fake friends if they had gotten a room in the inn they would have never gotten the prophetic utterance of the shepherds because watch this, here it is. I need people in my life that had to make a journey to be in relationship with me. I need people in my life that want to be with me so bad, they willing to go across the mountain, down through the valley, cross the river just to be with me. Somebody ought to give my God praise right there because in this season, I need people that are willing to work to be in relationship with me. In this season, I need people to understand that there's something inside of me that you might not even be able to see yet. But if you help me carry this thing, if you help me birth this thing, I promise you 
it's going to be bigger than anything we ever anticipated. So what I've learned is that Luke 2.15 says, when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. I'm here to declare over all of us that what COVID has done is allowed some people that were no longer required to be extracted from our life so that he could bring the shepherds into our life. Somebody ought to be ready to give God glory. Somebody ought to jump up and say, Lord, send my shepherds. I don't need just anybody. I need my shepherds. And I'm telling you that God is getting ready to send people in your life that are gonna have a prophetic presence in the kind of ironic that he that is going to be the great shepherd needs to meet shepherds before he's even born. So God is getting ready to send people in our life that are gonna show us our destiny by who they are. So you might be called to be a business owner. God is sending business owners so that you can see it's possible. You might be called to go back to school. God is sending people that have already made it through school so you can see it's possible. Does anybody understand what I'm trying to preach to you? I gotta get ready to say goodbye to you. Good to see all of your faces this morning. But I wanna let you know that every now and then, the no is necessary because the no gives me the ability to control my flesh. The no gives me the ability to celebrate my favor. The no gives me the ability to confine my fellowship. But then finally the no gives me the ability to certify my faithfulness. Do I have anybody that will declare just because I'm not in church does not mean my faith is wavering. I'm gonna do the same thing in my house that I would be doing in the house of the Lord. If I was in the house of the Lord, I'd be clapping my hands. If I was in the house of the Lord, I'd be standing on my feet. If I was in the house of the Lord, I'd be opening up my mouth. If I was in the house of the Lord, I'd be slamming my money on the pulpit. If I was in the house of the Lord, I'd be making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I love the fact that in spite of everything that has happened in Mary's life, I love what they do. In verse 22, it says that when it was time for the purification offering, as required by the law of Moses, after the birth of a child, his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So I want to declare to you, all around the world, open up your mouth and begin to give God praise. Don't allow COVID to rob you of your faithfulness. I am still blessed by the Most High God. I am still anointed by the King of Kings. I am still grateful that last night my bed didn't become my cooling board. I'm still giving him grace. I'm still giving him glory. I'm certifying that my faithfulness was never based upon how many people were in the building. My faithfulness was never predicated on how good the choir sang. I can bless him with no choir. I can bless him even in my house. I got to go there because I feel like lifting him up. Give God glory. Can we go there one time before I leave? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. I've got a question for you. Even in your living room, even in your bedroom, even in your family room, even in your car, even at the workplace, who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, he is, yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, the King of glory. Make a joyful noise unto the God of our salvation. He's worthy of our praise. Don't be discouraged because of the no. The no was necessary to show us how to control our flesh. The no was necessary to show us 
how to celebrate our favor to know what's necessary to confine our fellowships and the no was necessary to certify my faithfulness. I'm talking to those of us that in the midst of the pandemic have still brought God our tithe, still given God our praise. Here's what's so amazing, watch this. Mm, God, I feel your presence. Oh God, I feel your presence. Ronnie, here's what's so amazing. The other day, I talked to a sister, and it made so much sense, who was getting ready to get evicted, but she brought her tithe. And here's what's so amazing. You would think that's crazy. Why bring your tithe when you're getting ready to get evicted? And she said something that was so profound. She said, Keeping my tithe, my tithe was not enough to pay my rent. So if I'm going to get evicted, I'm going to at least get evicted knowing I'm okay with God. Now that was crazy, but it made so much sense to me. She said, me keeping my tithe was nowhere near enough to take care of the obligation to my landlord. So giving my tithe couldn't make my situation worse. She said, but what if giving my tithe released something in my life that was able to stop me from getting evicted? I don't know who recently has had a no and you needed this word today. Please know that whenever God allows us to handle a no, I go full circle now. I feel like I need to sow a seed into the five churches that I wanted to go to that said no. I'm so grateful you said no. Because if you had said yes, I might have been out of the will of God. I know I would have been out of the will of God. And here's what's so crazy, not throwing shade at anybody. Not one of those five is doing better than the mount today. Sometimes God allows a no. Here it is, you can tweak this. Because it's a yes in disguise. Sometimes the no is a yes in disguise. God is saying no over here because he's saying yes to so much more than you think you're losing. Well, if you're watching us today from anywhere around the world and you desire to accept Jesus as your Savior, real quickly, all you've got to do is text accept to 71441. If you're desirous of rededicating your life to Christ, all you got to do is text RESTART to 71441. And if you believe that the Mount Global Fellowship is a place where you are called to connect yourself, that I am a spiritual leader to you and that one of the sites is ordained to serve your spiritual leader, all you got to do is text Mount up to 71441. Now here's what I ask you to do. Don't just text it and then ignore the prompts. Because the prompts are going to give us the ability to serve you and help you walk out your faith. So once again, if you desire to accept Jesus, text accept to 71441. If you desire to rededicate your life to Christ, text restart to 71441. And if you desire to become a part of this fellowship, text Mount Up to 71441. Church Redefined is getting ready to start. You know how we do it every week. I hope that God bless me to be a blessing to you.
Y'all know how we leave. We would do it if we were in this building. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the throne of God, to the only almighty God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. I call you blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, and blessed when you go. In Jesus' name, love y'all the life.